Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to be looking at the cell membrane. We're going to go through the structure of the cell membrane, what it does, so its function, and we're going to get into some more details about how substances move through the membrane. But if you want more information on diffusion and osmosis, then you should go and watch that video. I've linked it up above now. If you are new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. Now, if you are new here, don't forget to get yourself a copy of my cheat sheet study guide currently available for grade 11 and 12, but also grade 10s. It's going to be releasing very, very soon. So keep your eyes out on the socials. And if you do see this video a little bit later on in the year for the first time, then the, the book has actually already probably come out and you can get that on my website, missangler.co.za. So let's dive straight into the video and let's talk about the cell membrane. Now, I have an empty cell here for you, so I've got nothing else in our way. And I'm going to be talking about this external layer on the outside here, the cell membrane. Now, the cell membrane is a living layer, which surprises a lot of pe people because they think that, you know, a layer how can it be alive? But it is alive, it's living. Now it needs to be alive because it maintains what enters and what exits out of the cell. And this ability to do so is called selective or selectively permeable. Now, what that means is selectively means it gets to decide what comes and goes in and out of the cell. So it selects and permeable means a substance can basically diffuse or move through it. And the cell membrane is selectively permeable, which means it decides what goes in and what goes out. And it also does that in amounts. In other words, if you have enough salt in a cell, it's not going to absorb any more. It's not going to allow any more to selectively move through the membrane. We want to stop that from happening. The likewise with glucose or vitamins and minerals, we want to stop that from happening. So it can select what comes and goes. Now, the cell membrane can be called different names in different textbooks. It is also referred to in some textbooks as the plasma membrane. And in more advanced textbooks, we can also refer to it as the plasma lamella. For a lot of schools, we need to know both of these names. Now what I want to do is go into the very specific structure of the cell membrane. And so what we've done is we've zoomed in really close. And what you can see here is two layers. Now, these two layers form a protective barrier. They are what held all of the cytoplasm inside of the cell. And we call this, if we group them together, a biphospholipid layer. Let's break that down now. So bi means two, and there is two layers stacked on top of each other. Here is the one layer, here is the other. And the rest, phospholipid, refers to the structure. There is a phosphorus and there is a lipid layer. But I actually want to show you even more detail than that so you can understand the structure. Now, if we zoomed in on one of these biphospholipids, it would look something like this. It kind of looks like a ball with two tails at the end. And what you are looking at here is a building component of the cell membrane. Now, looking at more detail, we have a head sitting at the top here, and this is made out of a phosphate ion. Now, below here, we have a little tail, and the tail is made out of a lipid. Remember, a lipid is a fat. Now, we stack these tail to tail. As you can see over here, the tails point inwards and the phosphate head points outwards. And so if we were to position ourselves to understand what this would look like, 
for example, this would be the outside of the cell and this would be the inside of the cell. Now, the cell membrane structure is very strong because of the way in which we've stacked these on top of each other, but they have some difficulty when allowing certain substances into the cell, and that is because of the lipid layer. So let me explain that a little bit further to you. Now, what happens is our phosphate head is what we call hydrophilic. And hydrophilic means that it loves water. So that means water is attracted to the head of the phosphate or the head of the layer. And that means water will come towards the membrane. The problem is the lipid tails, they are what we call hydro phobic and they actually don't like water and if you know anything about fats in the previous lessons we've learned about you will know that water and fat don't mix together so it makes it quite tricky but because we stack them tail to tail what happens is water is attracted by the head of our phospholipid and then when it gets into the fat layer because it, it's like repelled, like, oh, I don't want to be here anymore, it quickly gets pushed through the other side. And that is what helps water to move through the membrane really quickly, really easily, and also, most importantly, unassisted. It doesn't need any help. It just relies on physics to move the water from the outside to the inside and also the other way, too, if we want to get rid of water. Now, remember, the cell membrane is responsible for substances entering and exiting the cell, but we've only really talked about the basics in water. What about bigger molecules like hormones, proteins, you know, glucose, very specific things? Well, the cell membrane also has something for that too. So I have another layer of a cell membrane here, but this time I'm going to add in a new unique feature, which is called a channel protein. And these channel proteins over here, their responsibility is to maintain what is moving in and out of the cell, but you have to be the right shape or you have to be the right size to move through these channels. And you can see here, there is an opening that would allow you to move through from the outside to the inside of the cell. Now, channel proteins are, as the name suggests, made out of proteins, but they can have little additions, like little extras on the outside. And they can have, sitting off of them, and you might see this in your textbook, extra structures building on top of themselves like this, like a long little chain. What we call these things are called glycoproteins. Essentially, it is a sugar, which is what these little green structures are. Now, a little chain of sugars attached to the protein. So, glyco is sugar, protein is the little channel protein below. And those are used as receptors. They are used um, for identifying substances that should or shouldn't be there. Now, I actually want to go into a little bit more detail about how channel proteins actually work. So, we have our biphospholipid layer here once again. But this time, I'm going to add in a, a channel protein. And you will notice this channel protein has like a little flap over here that it has closed. And then I'm going to add one in on the other side over here that has one open. Now, this is what I want you to understand. If I am, for example, a glucose, so a sugar, and I am this shape, if I come along and I want to enter into the cell, and this is the channel protein I'm going to try and use, if I don't fit the shape of the channel protein or the size of it, like if I'm too big, I won't be able to move through and this little doorway is going to stay closed, right? If, however, I am a substance that is the right shape and size, let's say this was a sucrose, then what I can do is I can find a channel protein that I can fit in and the doorway will open, allowing me to enter. Now, why do we need this? We need this for a couple of reasons. The first one is we want to maintain 
something called a concentration gradient. Now that means that we want to keep one side of the cell high and one side of the cell membrane low. So we have like a concentration gradient moving from a high to a low, and that means substances move into a cell. I also need you to know that you can move substances out of a cell. If we had, hypothetically, too many sucrose molecules on this side, we could actually just move them out to the outside of the cell so that we don't have too much of a substance building up because anything that is in too great a quantity can poison and kill a cell. So we don't want too much water, too much sugar, protein, etc. Now, if you are wondering, well, what actually controls the opening and closing of channel proteins if it's not just if it's the right size? Because imagine we are the same size. Let's say, for example, I am a sucrose molecule is a circle, but let's say there is a protein that is also a circle, right? Now, they're both the same size and the same shape, so they can start to move through the channel protein. But what actually makes the little doorway open? Well, that is something called electrostatics, or basically, to keep it very simple, positive and negative charges. If you are not the right electrical charge and you try and move through the channel protein, the little doorway is not going to open up. Kind of think of it like swiping uh, an access card. You can have an access card, and if you, you can swipe it, but just because you swipe it doesn't mean the doorway is going to open, especially if you have restricted access. Now, as always, I like to finish off these lessons with a terminology recap, and I suggest you use these to create flashcards, a terminology list that you keep to prepare for exams. The first word I want to talk about, again, is being selectively permeable, which, remember, that means that the membrane is able to select or decide what enters and what doesn't enter. If you're thinking, but wait. Don't all membranes decide? No, there are certain membranes that can't decide what enters and exits them, but we are going to talk about that at a later stage. The next thing is a phospholipid. That was the building block of a cell membrane, and remember, they are stacked tail to tail. Speaking of tails and heads, we have the phospholipid layer, right? And we have a hydrophobic tail, means it doesn't like water, and a hydrophilic head, which does like water. And I think these terms often confuse us when we see them in exams. And their spelling must be perfect because the examiner won't know which one you're talking about if you misspell them. We then went on to talk about channel proteins. Those are the proteins that are wedged or inserted into the membrane layer that control bigger substances and specific substances uh, coming and going. Linked to that are glycoproteins, which are those channel proteins that have little carbohydrates that build on the outside of them. If you're wondering what they do, their responsibility is linked to um, controlling the cell itself. So if a little message comes from the outside, it can join to that carbohydrate chain. It also provides structure and support. And last but not least, we did also mention something called diffusion. Now, we are going to go into a lot more detail in uh, on diffusion as we go through the cell section. Um, if you are already there, though, I have linked the video above that I have on osmosis and diffusion. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And that's for me. Bye.